discuss this issue with regards to an audit that you may have heard of from the uh, U.S. Department of Homeland Security's Inspector General. Uh, on February 8, 2013, the Department of Homeland Security, Office of Inspector General, issued an audit regarding the receipt of by Erie County of FEMA assistance for the October 2006 surprise storm. Our office actually became aware of the audit's initial findings on December 27, 2012, and since then, we've been meeting to address the concerns identified in the audit that was released on February 8th. The audit provides Erie County 90 days in which to respond to the findings contained therein. We are in the process of formally preparing our response, and we, as you will see, are very well along in the process. But due to the questions that have arisen today, I would like to address these findings now. And as I said, I'm very pleased that the controller is here to join me as well to show the united effort that we have in the county with regards to these findings. It is my administration's contention that the federal auditors are legally wrong to recommend the recovery of $48 million in federal disaster funds based on the local preference comments that were made by County Executive Giambra at the time. Federal law, in effect, as of the date of the October surprise storm, specifically directs that in federal declared disasters, which the October surprise, surprise storm was, local officials give explicit preference for hiring local businesses to perform disaster recovery. That is precisely what Erie County Executive Giambra did at the time, as well as what other Erie County officials did. Frankly, as an attorney and formerly Erie County's controller, the chief auditing officer, I find it shocking that federal auditors would completely ignore such a well-known law when trying to justify their findings and recommending penalizing the county for following the law. I'd like you to turn your attention to the screen here in which we're going to do a little PowerPoint presentation. Uh, we are referring to the U.S. Department of Homeland Security Office of Inspector General's audit, which is OIG Audit 1223. Uh, they rely in a section of the audit on the Code of Federal Regulations. The Code of Federal Regulations is not the code of law of, of the federal government. It is the rules that are promulgated in effect to interpret the law. In the OIG, the Office of Inspector General Auditors, cited this section of the Code of uh, Regulations regarding the procurement of disasters to demand repayment of $39 million of federal funds. A specific section that is referred to by the auditors is 44 Code of Federal Regulations, section 13.36C2. And it specifically notes that grantees and subgrantees will conduct procurements in a manner that prohibits the use of statutorily or administratively opposed in-state or local geographic preferences, except in those cases where applicable federal statutes apply. So to speak. Let me tell you about the statute that does apply. The Robert T. Stafford Disaster Relief and Emergency Assistance Act, which is on the board here. The Stafford Act is the federal law governing disaster relief and federal emergency management agency funds and federally declared disasters, which is exactly what we're talking about here a FEMA declared disaster to clean up the October surprise storm. The Robert T. Stafford Disaster Relief Act was signed into law in November of 1988. It amended the Disaster Relief Act of 1974. This act constitutes the statutory authority for most federal disaster response activities, especially as they pertain to FEMA. Now, that act was amended in 2006 with the Local Community Recovery Act. This was signed into law by President George W. Bush on April 20th of 2006. This law states that it specifically authorizes set-asides for major disaster or emergency assistance acquisitions for businesses that reside or primarily do business in the area affected by the disaster emergency. In fact, because of this amendment, contracting officers are directed to give preference to the extent feasible and practical to local organizations, or as the law specifically states, uh, or individuals residing in or doing business primarily in the area affected by such major disaster emergency. Now, this, this followed Hurricane Katrina. Congress decided to amend the law to direct local preferences to help the local economy that was just negatively impacted by disaster recovery. This, in effect, was also made binding in other areas of the law. On October 4th of 2006, President George W. Bush also signed a, an adjustment to uh, the Public Law 109-295, which is the Department of Homeland Security Appropri Appropriations Act for 2007, which specifically required justifications for federal disaster expenditures made to non-local firms or individuals. 
this is what we're talking about. The Federal Office of Inspector General to the Department of Homeland Security doesn't even know the law that applies to the situation here. The law specifically states in two sections, including in section 694 here, preference shall be given to the extent feasible and practical to organizations, firms, and individuals residing in or doing business in the community. Uh, when we received the audit on February 8th of 2013, we, uh, I specifically asked for a county attorney opinion, and our county attorney, Mike Saragusa, is here, and he issued an opinion on that date, noting that the the, the rule that the Inspector General Office bases its objection to local contracting as stated by Mr. Giambra was first adopted in 1998, last adopted in 1995, before the local preference laws were enacted. However, the local preference laws were enacted prior to Mr. Giambra actually going out there and, and making a statement saying that we are going to rely on local contractors where feasible. Was that incorrect for him to say that? No, it was not. And that's what I think is the most aggravating thing about this audit is that Erie County followed the law and were being criticized by a division of the uh, Department of Homeland Security for supposedly not following the law when they are relying on the wrong provisions and Erie County and County Executive Giambra at the time relied on the correct positions. Now folks, there's absolutely no evidence of improper use of these funds. It's also become clear that if we were to follow the old regulations, the vast majority of money was actually spent and went to out-of-area businesses that came in, but it doesn't matter because the law provided that we could go to local preference if necessary. Now, I caution our counterparts in New Jersey and New York that are recovering from super source standing, and they're relying on the statements that are being made by the New York State Office of Emergency Off Management as well as the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Because you may rely on them for cleaning up and doing what you think is right based on their, their, their advice, but some auditor 10 years later may come down the line and say you're wrong. The irony is the auditors are wrong because they're not relying on the right law. Uh, since learning of this audit, my administration has been combing through six-year-old records in the warehouse, has, has had dozens of meetings, including direct conversations with federal officials. And I personally spoke to Congressman Higgins and Congressman Collins when I attended the State of the Union on this issue, and both agreed that they were going to assist us to address this matter because it was incorrect. And truthfully, thereafter, Congressman Higgins has issued two letters, one on February 8th to the Deputy Inspector General for Homeland Security, uh, and, and then on February 12th to the actual administrator of FEMA, noting that the findings contained in the audit are wrong because the law they rely upon is not the law of the land and was not the law of the land during the October surprise storm. So I, as well as everyone in this office, including I know the controller who's spoken about this, we're going to work with our federal representatives, we're going to work with others, to do everything possible to demonstrate that this misinterpretation of the law, the flawed methodology used, and the improper opinions expressed by this Inspector General report will never have a negative impact in county government. I want to remind everybody, this is a recommendation. The county does not owe $48 million to the federal government. There's been no request to ask for $48 million for the federal government, and I'm fairly confident that when all is said and done, and our, our response has been officially reported back to FEMA, as well as the IG's office, that the county will not be owing $48 million, because it would be silly for the county to pay back the federal government $48 million when we follow the law. I'd be glad to take any questions at this time. Does Mr. Mihailo have any questions or a statement beforehand? Yeah, I just, uh, I want to really stress the fact that we have a unified front on this. Republicans, Democrats, uh, on an important issue like this, we need to put our political differences aside and work together and do what's best for the people of Erie County. Uh, we heard Brian Lippy from the Control Board a few weeks back say it's really important that our elected leaders work across party lines to work together and do what's best for taxpayers. Uh, and I'm really proud of the fact uh, that my office, the Controller's office, uh, can stand side by side with our county executive uh, and do what's best for the people of Erie County. Uh, I pledged the county executive before that I would stand by his side and fight with him for taxpayers every single day on this issue. And he's absolutely right. This is a recommendation from Homeland Security to FEMA, and we are going to work together as hard as we can to make sure that that recommendation uh, is rejected when it comes to uh, this $48 million payment. Also an issue and I checked with uh, people on our finance team. I mean, right now, the most recent report shows that Erie County has about $45 million cash in hand, and we have $12.5 million very shortly going out 
available for payroll. So even if this incredibly outrageous number that we had to come up with the money right away, we wouldn't have the cash to begin with. But like I said before, I want to make sure uh, that we do have a unified front and that I stand with the county executive uh, to make sure that we work with our congressional leaders and I welcome the legislature to join us as well to do what we can uh, to make sure that Erie County is not responsible for this $48 million. Who's I have a question for you. If, you uh, if they were nosing around up here in the, 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 the fog of planes and the better part of eight months last year, and you got this audit, and you've been responding back and forth, and you've been the year of the congressman who's produced these letters for all this time, why are you hearing about this just now? I don't know. It was issued on February 8th. It was public knowledge then. I mean, I'm. Let's put it this way. We're in the process of putting together our response, which is going to show that all of the findings are unfounded. There's no reason for us to go out there and until we've had the opportunity to put together our response and say, we, we don't know what the response to this is. We know what the response to this is. It's incorrect. I mean, I'm not, I'm not one to go out there and, and know exactly what's going on and what's being released in the media, but I'll say this. We've been working on this for a number of months now, and, and in fact, uh, I remember audits that were done by NYSEMO and FEMA during the storm and since then, there were there were many audits that were performed, and each and every time the county was found clean. So I don't I don't see an issue with this uh, for one reason because it's it's wrong. It's just factually and legally incorrect, and, and therefore uh, I can't speak on why some auditor from D.C. made this recommendation uh, because I did not talk to that person personally, but they're wrong. Okay. Extreme Michael. example. What they're saying is the people who were in houses without heat and light and power. Oh. You can't clean up, you can't get anything going because we have 4,000 pages of regulations that have to be uh, filled out before you can get your heat and light back. In some ways they're saying that. They're saying that, uh, that, that we would have to have had wait for an RFP to be issued for a response to come back from national firms and in the meantime the community is suffering. And that's exactly why the law was amended as a result of Hurricane Katrina, to say we want to give local local leaders the opportunity to immediately fix and clean up a disaster. And so we're not only going to say it's okay that you hire locals, we're going to say you should hire locals if at all costs you can do it. So in funny, what's funny is the auditors are basically saying uh, we don't care what the impact would have been on the community by ignoring the law that was in place. I just find it, I find it shocking as an attorney, as I said, as former controller, that, that an audit would be issued which completely ignores the pertinent law. And it's actually, it's a very bad audit to put them out. Mr. County Executive, if I have to follow up on my earlier question. Um, did you, when you put forth your four year plan to the fiscal control board, did, did you make mention of this as a potential liability? Any, well, the control board. board's aware of it. Earlier, but they were you did oh, make mention were. of them. We don't we didn't need to put it in a four year plan because there's no basis in it. It's a potential David, plan. it's not my fault that you didn't know about it beforehand, but I'll say this. There's no basis to it. Yeah. We agree. Know. Congressman Higgins agreed. That's why he sent his letters. The control board's been aware of it. Okay. And I, I don't think there's anything that we have to worry about. We have ninety days to respond. It's not like we ignored it. We've been dealing with it and we're gonna respond. We actually the issue was on February 8th, and we have until, I believe it was that, May 8th, so, to so officially so respond, and that's what we're going to do. And I feel confident when all is said and done. Did you present to them as a potential liability, though, Mr. Colin Carr? So you know, you know, you stood here and you said, you're way off the Next you're question. Wrong. That has no merit. Next question. Excuse me? Next question. Can you, why won't you answer that question? I meant, David, you asked the question. I'm giving them an opportunity to answer Can you the question. fill them for the work and the time you're doing to show them that they're wrong? I mean, well, you, you've got a lot of time and effort. These people can be doing other things. Can you I, I would, I would, you were wrong I would, I would like to build them, but I know we're not going to get repaid for that. So uh, the odds of, of us billing them for the cost associated with refuting their, their basically baseless claims will have to eat. And we are spending plenty and plenty of hours trying to deal with this. Yeah, I'm sorry, I just want to address Woody's question too, and, again, and that's exactly why that's exactly why we work collaboratively together uh, when it comes to saying that we're going to have a unified front and we're going to work together to make sure that we're not on the hook uh, for this $48 million. And again, I do credit the County Executive and Deputy County Executive Kilby for the fact that we've gone over numbers this afternoon, and, uh, and that's exactly why today I came forward to say whatever help that you need, uh, that our office will be willing to work in a collaborative manner to do what's best for taxpayers. 
statement on how much does this cost for you? Or? I don't know. We, we have to look. We, we, are spending, we are spending time and effort away from what would normally be our daily requirements. Individuals from emergency services have been involved, individuals from purchasing involved, individuals from the budget office, individuals from law, individuals from my office. Uh, it's not like we're ignoring this. We've been putting a tremendous effort in, and I think it's quite clear from what we've been able to identify so far, the claims of the audit are meritless. Whether we actually get to recoup the cash that we have to spend to show that it's meritless, we're, never, we're not probably never going to get that from the federal government. So I know you think that you, you won't have to pay this money back, but you know what if what impact would that have on your county if you do it? It would break our bank. We would not have enough cash to do it to pay for it, and it would it would reduce our fund balance by more than fifty percent. It would it would cause your county to uh, not only have enough cash, but it would probably drop our credit rating because our, our fund balance would immediately be depleted by. Uh, uh, We'd be going from the mid 80s to almost 30 million dollars. It, it, it would cause not a financial crisis, it would cause a cash flow crisis, but it, it, it would in all likelihood result in a downgrading of our bond rating because all that good work that we did to get the, the, the fund balance level up would be dropped in one fell swoop. It's something that we're, we're dealing with. Am I worried that's going to happen? No, I don't believe that's going to happen because I think when they actually see the law, uh, and that's why Congressman Higgins is involved and why Congressman Collins said he would, he would assist. Uh, I think it's very clear that this is not going to go anywhere. And in, in fact, probably some auditor is going to be reprimanded for issuing an audit that relied upon the wrong law. And also, to just, to, that, I'm sorry, just so you know, it's $83,489,000 uh, going back to 011. So that's in our undesignated funds. Sorry, Jordan, so this, when does that law take effect? Before the October storm. The, the, well, there's there's two laws, if we can back up. The, the first law, which is the Local <coughs> Community Recovery Act, was signed into law on April 20th, 2006, by President George W. Bush. And it specifically notes that the, the major disaster uh, emergency assistance acquisitions for businesses that should be preference to, to rely on those that are in the, in the community. And, and, and that was in a response to Hurricane Katrina. And then the second act, which was the, uh, it's another portion of the, the actually the appropriations for 2007 of Homeland Security. Uh, that was signed on October 4th, 2006, which was approximately 10 days or so. I think this October storm was on the 17th, uh, 12th. Okay, so it was, it was actually signed into law before the October surprise storm. None of these pieces of legislation, which is the law of the land, are in the IG's report. They missed it. And that's what's that's what's shocking is they don't even they, they don't even include the right section of the law. But did they take effect immediately sometimes there's a publishing yes, sure. process yes. rulemaking sure. process yes. which yes. was in effect at the time it wasn't just that it was Yes, it was. It was an effective time. Yeah. Yeah. Have you talked to Joel or to I have talked to the county attorney, the former county deputy was. And was uh, the county attorney at the time was? Uh, I I do not believe I've talked to the county attorney at the time. I haven't. I have talked to the former county executive John Brown and said we're working on this and we need statements he made at the time we're legal. Sir, uh, in, in your report, audit, they're also critical of the, the purchasing director's action. This was someone who worked under Mr. Giambro was dismissed by Mr. Collins and brought back by you. If that's correct. Correct. Should she be working for the county right now? Well, we have the documentation to show that everything was fine. They, they were critical of her, but we do have the documentation. Uh, we had to get it from the New York State Emergency Management Office. Uh, we've gone through all the records here. We are going to provide that as part of our written response. Okay. So their, their critique of her uh, was in regards to items that they felt were not accurate. Well, we now have the documentation from NICEMO to show that everything was appropriately done. And uh, we, we unfortunately couldn't find them by the time they issued the audit. We said, we're looking for them. We now have them, and we actually had to get them from Albany. So that was my next question. You got that stuff post. And that's going to be included as part of our response. I, I mean, I was controller for six years. When we have an exit conference to a formal audit, you present the actual audit and say, here's what we are proposing to issue. Do you object to anything here? The problem was they never did that. They gave us some bullet points saying we have a problem with these areas here, but they ever, the first time we saw the audit was uh, actually it was embargoed. It was, we were provided a copy on February 7th. The embargo for release for February 8th. 
That's actually the first time anybody in county government actually saw the audit, which was less than 24 hours before it was released. If we had seen those findings beforehand, we would have we would have objected and said, no, we, you're wrong, and here's why. So that's why I'm disappointed in this audit, not just because of the, the, the inaccurate law that they're relying on, but they never really gave us an opportunity to respond to their findings until the audit was issued. So now what we're doing, we are putting together the entire package to provide to the Inspector General's office and FEMA showing why the audit findings are unfounded. And at that time, it will show that all the findings, not only the one regarding the law, but the other nine million are unfounded. And at that point, I believe uh, the purchasing director will be clear. Is it your belief that this is so unfounded and so clear cut that the control board shouldn't consider this as a potential liability? I mean, it's not a potential liability. Right now, it is not a potential liability because uh, we don't even have a claim against the county. Yep. We would have a potential liability under accounting standards if FEMA issued us a letter saying, you owe us $48 million. They haven't done that. All we have is a recommendation from the IG's office that FEMA potentially go after us. We would have a potential liability if FEMA sent us a letter saying, you have it. That's how the accounting standard works. We don't have that, and I'm not expecting us to get that at all because I think we're going to be, when, when everything is all said and done, your county will be clear from what really was a, a poorly drafted audit. Yeah, I mean, uh, in that respect, I do feel for the administration and the fact that they were not given a, a proper exit conference, and there was no way for, for this administration to uh, address the issues appropriately because of the way it was handled by the federal government. And I fully support the county executive and the fact that uh, I'll do whatever I can to help him and this administration make sure uh, that FEMA does not put into place this recommendation from the Department of Homeland uh, Security. And the county executive is correct. I mean, this would absolutely devastate Erie's county budget. And, and like I said before, we have $45 million cash in hand, or $12.5 million uh, in payroll going out this week. Uh, our undesignated fund balance is $83,489,000. Uh, and it would absolutely cripple Erie County government. So I'm confident uh, Republicans, Democrats, are all going to come together as a united front here in Erie County government and make sure this never comes to pass. And, and, I, and I'll note for the record, we have come together not only in Erie County, but the two congressional representatives for Erie County are different. One's a Democrat, one's a Republican, and everyone agrees that not only are these unfounded, but we'll work together to ensure that our assent is, is, is ever recovered. Do you know who asked for this audit and why after six years it came around? Uh, we've heard, from what we've heard, the audit probably was not done at the behest of anybody locally but was done as a number of audits that are being completed at this time looking at FEMA uh, coming straight from D.C. So I, I think what, what we've been told is that someone has an axe to grind against FEMA and the amount of money that's been spent in regards to uh, disasters in a, in a five to ten year period. And, and we've heard we're just one of other recipients of FEMA dollars that are presently being audited. Uh, we've not heard of any complaint locally as to why the audit would have, would have, would have moved forward. Do you know of any of the others are? No, we don't. We were just given a clinical audience. Mark, do you want to have any inkling that because of all the fiscal loans of Washington and there's fiscal cliffs and now see frustration, that they're going around scrounging for money any place they can possibly get it, and hey, why not try to recover money we issued seven years ago to Erie County or any place else? Maybe, uh, but I will note that this, this audit was commenced before Superstorm Sandy and all these other things. Yeah. So I, there, there, was, there was a heavy critique, if you remember, during the middle of last year against FEMA. It actually came from the presidential campaign. Yeah, we knew that this group was coming a year or so. Right? Yeah, but yeah, they, any England that this is a battle tank, they kind of like, just get the nickel and dime to the battle and get the battle in the end. It might be, but in the end, FEMA has not requested any cash back from the county. Uh, and, and I will I will remind folks, I was controller for six years, I was controller during the October surprise storm. We went through numerous audits by FEMA and NICEMO to prove that what Erie County was spending its dollars on was appropriate. And we were signed off every time. Trust me, our staff was sick and tired of the auditors from NICEMO and FEMA going through to make certain that everything was done correctly. I think someone in D.C. has got an axe to grind, and they're trying to show that FEMA's not being run. Correct. 
we we're, we've got the proof to show that everything that we did was correct. We relied upon, and I say we, I'm talking about three county government and leaders at the time, relied upon the advice of the New York State Emergency Management Office and the Federal Emergency Management Agency. The individuals were on the ground here on the October surprise storm, just like they were on the ground here during Flight 3407. We relied on their advice. It turns out their advice was correct. <coughs> I would warn our friends downstate that are dealing with the cleanup from Superstorm Stand Sandy that don't be surprised, even though you rely on the correct advice from FEMA and ICMO, that someone down the line says, we've got to check and make certain it's done properly. Yes, any other questions? Yeah, I have two questions about the documentation. Um, you mentioned you've, you've since gotten documentation from Albany and I just was looking for a clarification on what documentation that is. And then on the $9 million where they said the county couldn't produce the right documentation, that's you the now have that? That's the documentation. Okay, you were able to get that through Albany? Through Albany. They had, is it like a season thing or what? Uh, it's, it's, it's a whole carte blanche thing. And we literally went through boxes and boxes of detail and documentation receipts. Uh, reports, if you remember during the October surprise storm, there were inspectors that had to inspect every load to ensure that the cubic inch and cubic yard of debris that was in a vehicle, a truck, actually met the cubic yard of what they were saying they were dropping off. It's all kinds of stuff like that. The $9 million that they're saying we could not produce the documentation for. I will agree, by the time the audit was issued, Erie County did not have the documentation. We have it now. We feel confident that when all is said and done and that the documentation is provided to the IG's office, that they will that that, that audit finding will, will have no base. Because we know we found it since then. Anything else, guys? You, you went forward. forward. Timeline going forward. What are you looking at? Um, excuse me. Can I wrap it up around what time and how long do you think it's going to take? Well, we Make sure that the leave your shot so he's not. <laughs> <laughs> I can get the bread out, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Timeline, we have 90 days from which to respond from, from the date of the audit, which is February 8th. We are in the process of, of putting together, we actually have a letter together, but we, we're still compiling all the issues with regards to the $9 million documentation. We're making the copies of it. But my goal, we're not only going to have it out before the 90 days, we'll probably have it out the next month. And then it's going to be a back and forth. And I think at that point, uh, you'll see very quickly that there's no basis to the claim. Even if there was, and I'm not saying there is, Erie County did everything appropriately with regards to the cleanup, and there's no reason that that money should be gone after anyway. And I think Congressman Higgins spells it out correctly. We followed the law. We followed the law, so if we followed the law, why would we be penalized by the federal government for following the federal government's law? So, you don't, this other $10 million, you don't, you don't believe the county will be on the hook for any of this? Do you belong and step on belongs, counties associations, county executives, I think there's a county controller for all of this. If you could call whoever runs it and says, hey, look, if you're downstate or in any area like in central New York where they were hit last, uh, two years ago, you might want to get your papers out. I have not personally, though I can tell you it's something when I go to the next county executive association meeting and I say I'm going to talk to Steve Clario, I will, just so that they let their my brethren, the controllers, know, and I know the other controllers, said, don't be surprised even if you do everything right, you dot every I, cross every T, mark every box properly, that someone's going to come back and criticize you later. It's the nature of the federal beast sometimes. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Anything else? Okay.